Iniquitatis absolva veris, Domine, Domine, Christus in Abi. De profundis clamaviate, Domine, Domine, exaudi voce mea, fiant ares tu intendentes, in vocem deprecationis me. Siri quitatis observaris domine, domine qui sus in ebit, qui apud e propitiatio es, e protelegem tuam sustinuite domine, sustinuit anima me in bebo eus, speravit anima mea in domino, a custodia matutina usque ad noctem, sperat Israel in Domino, qui apu Domino misericordia, et copios apu Deum redentio, et requiem eternam, Dona eit Domine, et lux perpetua, luce a Deis. Oh. 
सरयू ने आसे एम साथीस अंजलि अंजलि सीसीपी एन अपाशे एन फेडी सी कुजुची तो कुया एन थे स्परादी रे फिटी नो कनेस एन एन फेडी सिस्टम ही आ सगारी एन फेडा को को से को से निया एन डबल नो सुमी एस इंप्रेशन फिरी उन तो बेके के बने आ तो इका दे स्प्रेड टू सांती दे फ्रॉम या से क्लास से को रो जोमी <laughs> Non pre venia mu seo se domia mu oni mi se dominus in justo et in voce angeli et in juba dei descende te celo et mort qui qui Christo sub resurgens fini dei dei nos qui vivimus qui credi qui mor simul rapiam morbum ili se nubibus obiam Christo et era in si semper cum domino meri mu si te quae consul domini in vitam in verbis Christi.
Creationis in gemnis quotam quam reus ut parebe potus meus supplicanti pace deus qui Maria Marsolristi
Today the burial of Matthew, Mrs. Miss Angela Parker, <clears throat> and the epistle for this mass is taken. In Paul's first of the Thessalonians, chapter four. Brethren, we will not have you ignorant concerning them that are asleep, that you be not sorrowful, even as other, as others who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again. Even so, them who have slept through Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you in the word of the Lord, that we who are alive, who remain unto the coming of the Lord, shall, prevent, shall not prevent them who have slept. For this we say unto you in the word of the Lord, that we are alive and we the Lord shall not them who have slept. For the Lord himself shall, shall come down from heaven with commandment and with the voice of an archangel and with the trumpet of God. And the dead who are in Christ shall rise first. Then we who are alive who are left shall be taken up together with them in the clouds to meet Christ unto us and in, unto into the air. And so shall we be always with the Lord. Wherefore, come with you one another with these words. Then the Gospel, taking that according to St. John, chapter 11. At that time Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if thou hadst been here, my brother had not died. But now also I know that whatsoever thou shalt ask of God, God will give it thee. Jesus said to her, Thy brother shall rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection of the last day. And Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life, and he that believeth in me, although he be dead, shall live. And everyone that liveth and believeth in me, he shall not taste death forever. Believest thou this? He says to him, Yea, Lord, I believe that thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God, who art come into this world. Thus are the words of today's Holy Gospel. In the Father's Holy Ghost, Amen. Whenever a gazelle is running away from a lion, and the lion comes and catches the gazelle and kills it and eats it, or the same of any other the prey of the animals, the other gazelles stop and they start eating their grass and they go about their daily business. And there is no mourning for the one that died. And there's no regret of any kind. Because the gazelle lived his life as a gazelle, he ate grass and lived with all the other animals and all the things he should have done. And when he died, he became food for a lion. And so nothing bad happened. Nothing disordered happened. Therefore, the other gazelles, they just simply go about their business. But it's not the same for human beings. The sacred scripture tells us it is given for all men to die. And after death, the judgment. As Bishop Sheen used to say, we don't have a single case of a cow with psychosis, or a bull with neurosis, or a dog with psychological problems and worries, because they are just as they are meant to be. When they die, they are meant to die, and they, they are part of the whole good of the universe that God created. But man was not meant to die. It was given that he died. But it was not meant that he die. We were meant to live forever. We were meant to end our days like Enoch did the first time. Enoch will die at the end of the world. But Enoch one day walked with God. He went for a walk and then he just walked with God and was seen no more. Or Elias who went up in a fiery chariot. Both of them are also going to die at the end of the world when they shall preach against the Antichrist and they shall be slain in the city of Jerusalem and their bodies shall be left dead in the streets for three days. So even Enoch and Elias, they shall not escape death. It is given for all men to die. But why is there death? There is only one cause of death for human beings. Only one reason we die, and it is called sin. And there is only one reason to fear death, and that is judgment. As Bishop Sheen used to say, it takes eternity to make a man despair. It's because of the worry about what's going to happen after we die. That's why people need to take pills and medication. 
That's why they have to say, Doctor, how long am I going to live? Dogs don't care how long they're going to live. Cows don't care. care. Ants don't care. But humans care. We care very much. Because we were made to live forever. And we were not meant to die. We were meant to live on this earth for a short time, not die, but go to judgment, and then pass into a happy eternity to be with God face to face. But all human beings were made to see God. We were made for three purposes. We were made to know God, love God, and serve God. And show forth His goodness by doing these things. And after we know God, love God, and serve God for a time, we pass to judgment. And God says, how did you know me? And how did you love me? And how did you serve me during the time given to you upon this earth? And hence comes fear and anxiety. Because when any any one of us looks back honestly upon our lives, we find there are many days when we did not think of God. There are many ways that we acted were not in the service of God, and we showed the love of so many things other than God. And oh, so many things above God, and more important than God. Every time we commit a mortal sin, it is to love a creature over God. We choose to love beer over God. We choose to love pleasure over God. We choose to love money over God. We choose to love our own pride over God. Greed over God. We choose so many things over God. And as we look back over our lives, we find, I have made many choices that when I was not meant to make. My mind was made to know the truth, but I have known many lies. My mind, my, my mouth was made to speak the truth and to speak good things, but I have spoken many wicked things and used my mouth for great evil. And the body has been used for sin. It's a man that has any reason, judgment in him. When he goes to death, he listens to St. James, the Apostle. St. James, man, is any man sick among you, he says in his epistle. Let him call in the priest of the Lord, and the Lord shall anoint him. And the priest shall anoint him. And if he be in faith, his sin shall be forgiven him. Anyone who's rational knows when we're going close to death, call in the priest of the Lord. Why? Because the priest is going to anoint the eyes. Through the, through, by His whole anointing, the love and mercy, and the Lord forgive you whatever sins you have committed by the use of your power to see. Because we've used our eyes to sin. That's why they have the internet now. To find more ways to sin with our eyes. Praise them, Sanctum, with your name, and misericordiam. And do the TV, Dominus, quid, quid, per auditum. Daily Christi, Amen. By His holy and loving mercy, the Lord forgive whatever sins you have committed by the use of your power to hear. We have used our ears not only to hear that which is righteous and good and true, but we have been fulfilled the prophecy of sacred scripture in the second epistle to St. Timothy, where our Lord Jesus Christ said, and St. Paul said, towards the end of the world, they shall have itching ears. And they shall heap unto themselves liars to tell them what they want to hear. When a liar lies, he does a terrible thing. But lies have no power. Lies have no strength if ears don't receive them. And ears that don't itch, and ears that don't like evil, and ears that don't want to hear wickedness and to hear lies, these ears don't listen to lies. So there are two sides to a lie. The side of the liar and the side of the one that hears the lies. When we go to death, we know that the priest should take oil and he should anoint my ears. Because my ears have many times willingly heard what they should not have heard. I have turned my ears to many wicked things and therefore with fear do my ears face judgment. St. James says, Is any man sick among you? Let him call in the priest of the Lord. Let him anoint him with oil in the name of the Lord. And his sin shall be forgiven him. And then the nose. We anoint the nose. Priestum sanctum in his court, in the name of Dominus, quid quid per odoratum, de le Christi, amen. By his holy anointing, love and mercy, I will forgive you whatever sins you have committed by the use of your power to smell. We even sin with our nose. Gluttony begins with the nose, and oftentimes impurity. 
And we have a nose for things that we shouldn't want. Things that don't belong to us. We sin with our nose. We even find a way to sin with our nose. And then he takes the oil and says, Praesum sanctum unctionum, et suosum misericordium, indulgitim dominus quid quid, per gustum et locutionum deliquisti amen. And he anoints the lips. By his holy Lord and loving mercy, may the Lord forgive you whatever sins you may have committed by the use of your power to taste and to, and to speak. We have used our mouths for sin. Therefore the priest of the Lord comes in and he anoints our mouths. The tongue that was used to taste was guilty of many gluttonies. And the tongue that was used to speak the truth was made to speak many, many calumnies and many detractions. And therefore it must be anointed with oil that the sins of the tongue may be forgiven. Then the hands are put before the priest. By His holy and loving mercy, may the Lord forgive you whatever sins you have committed by the use of your power to touch. God gave us the power to touch. Our hands were made to build, but we have used them to destroy. Our hands were made for love, and they have been used for lust. They have been made to carry food to our, our, our stomachs and to carry to be a tool to take care of our bodies. And we have used them for every manner of sin. They have been used for violence. They have been used in so many wicked ways. Therefore the wise man will call in the priest of the Lord and say, Lord, anoint my hands. And so, through the may of by His holy name and the loving mercy, the Lord forgive you whatever sins you have committed by the use of your power to touch. This is the way to prepare for judgment. Reisum sanctum unsuonum, et suum praesium misericordiam, and duti dominus quid quid per gressum deliquisti amen. By His holy name and the loving mercy, may the Lord forgive you whatever sins you have committed by the use of your power to walk. By the use of your power to walk. And so the priest anoints the feet. One of our cranky priests, a French priest from Phoenix, was going into a sick call in Canada and he was very upset. It was called, he was determined to find something wrong with him and he walked in. And he walked into the church, to the house, you forgot the, and they had the candle. Oh, darn, they had the candle. <laughs> then he walked around the corner. You forgot to set out the... And the cloth was set out on the table. And they had the cross sitting there. And then he anointed everything. And they did not uncover the feet. And he said, you call yourselves Catholics. You know how to anoint the feet. And he said, Thelma, I didn't know it was going to anoint my feet. Can you get my feet from out under the bed? He had wooden feet. So they pulled out his wooden feet. Said, you want to anoint these, Father? We didn't know you were going to anoint them. But we must anoint the feet. And why the feet? Because we carry the devil so many places. The feet are sacred, says the Holy Gospel. Blessed are the feet of the preachers of the gospel of peace. The priests and the bishops who go to heaven and the doctors of the church, they shall have sacred feet by which it be known that these men carried the gospel wherever they went. But how many times have we carried sin and carried bad example and carried every manner of wickedness and carried foolishness and lies and false beliefs wherever we went? It took the feet to do that. And we have used our feet to do many bad things. And hence the wise man will call on the priest before he dies and says, Lord, priest, anoint my feet. And he anoints the feet. By His holy anointing and loving mercy, may the Lord forgive you whatever sins you have committed by the use of your power to walk. And then all these five gates are purified. We use these five senses, these five gates. St. B calls them five gates. Their gates voice the soul goes out through these gates to the world. And the world passes through these gates into our soul. And as we go through life, the, the gates become dirty. The gates become filthy with all the sins we've committed. And hence, before we go to the judgment seat, we want those gates to be cleansed. 
And the priest comes in with the oil of the Lord, as commanded by St. James in his epistle. And we anoint the eyes and the hands and the nose and the mouth and the ears and the feet to purify the soul that it might meet the judgment. Then receive the Holy Viaticum, the last Holy Communion, by which we receive that the, the, the body and blood and soul of any of our Lord Jesus Christ, so that we are ready to carry Christ inside of us into the kingdom of heaven. So that when we go before the judgment seat of our Lord Jesus Christ, God the Father and God the Son and God the Holy Ghost looking upon us at the place of our death, we'll look at the, to our senses and see they are not filthy with all the sins committed during life. They've been purified by the oil and the priest of the Lord. And that he is, he is, I do not see the presence of his own selfishness and his own making himself his own God, but I see the very presence of the Father, of the Son, the Son of God in flesh inside of that body by the Holy Viaticum, and therefore ready to receive this soul into a happy judgment. Come to me, beloved of my Father. We live this life to prepare for another life. We are not here to be happy on this earth and then die. Dogs and cats and gazelles and all other creatures, they're made to live on this life, live in this world, and they're happy in this world. And when they die, their time is up, and there's no need to mourn. But human beings are here for a short time. We're here to prepare for heaven. We're here to go to a place where we're going to see God face to face. That is why in the Holy Church, we have big, huge stone cathedrals all over the world, Catholic Church. Massive stone cathedrals. But no matter how big and how strong these stone cathedrals are, it is instructed by Holy Mother Church that in the tabernacle, in the front of it, will be a little cloth. A little cloth that reminds us that this is just a tent. A tent is not a place of permanent residence. A tent is a place where we temporarily stay on a journey from one place to another. It is a tabernacle. It's a tent. And we were reminded by the little bitty veil which they took away at Vatican II. They threw it away. Heaven is not on this earth. Heaven is in heaven. That little veil from the tabernacle reminds you, no matter how big is the stone in your house, no matter how good is your security system, no matter how good it is, one day you will die. Father Hugo just found one of our priest friends on Sunday, just two days ago, dead four days in his own house. You can have all the best security systems. You will not escape death. You can have all your medications on the counter. You can have all the things that you need. You will not escape death. Therefore, it's foolishness to overprotect ourselves in this life. Many people now are voting, hoping that Trump wins so that we can save our economy. But it's more important that we save our souls. You have a lot of money in your bank account. And remember, as they say in the old Irish Proverbs, wherever there's a will, there's relatives. If you have stuff, everyone will show up at your funeral. And if you don't, they won't. Tell them I wanted me to have this. We all like stuff. But no matter what stuff we have, it shall all be left behind. But our souls shall not be left behind. Our merits shall not be left behind. And our wicked deeds shall not be left behind. And remember, many souls have left the Catholic Church in the last 500 years. But remember, the church is like the Hotel California. You can check out any time you want, but you can never leave. It's always there. As Bishop Fulton Sheen used to say, there may be wonderful roads you can drive down this life. Many wonderful paths, thousands of them. There may be thousands of beliefs and religions you can enjoy, enjoy your life in, but there's only one religion that you need to die in. There's only one path that you can be on and die on that path and go and find God face to face in happiness. And that's the path that our Lord Jesus Christ gave to us in His Holy Roman Church. And He gave us tools to help us get to heaven. The Holy Seven Sacraments. 
And one of them is called the sacrament of extreme unction. The final anointing. Purify our souls because we are all guilty of sin. Notice we're taking the old brave the old ritual. You walk into an old lady, some old holy lady, some old holy man dying on the deathbed. And we open up the ritual. And we're praying, not the prayers of the anointing, but the prayers of the dying. And it begins like this. Oh Lord, this woman, whom I have never met before. Or they told, what's her name? Her name is Teresa. Her name is Teresa. This woman, Teresa. <laughs> She has committed countless sins in her life and has in so many ways offended thee most greatly. Do not look with great anger upon her sins. Or this man, Ralph, whom I think his name is Ralph, but I'm not sure. I've never met him before. They say he's a very good man. But this man, Ralph, he has committed many sins in his life. Do not look with anger upon his sins. The church knows that every one of us are sinners. Our Lord Jesus Christ said a long time ago, Thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Peter, his name used to be Simon, but it was changed to rock. And our church is built upon him. That's a very solid church. And what happened after Peter became the rock? He cursed and he swore he did not know the man. He denied Christ three times. And even after the resurrection, he made a mistake, not a mortal sin, but a mistake and a fault, a venial fault, but a, not a good one, by which he, he placated the Judaizers. And St. Paul had to correct him to the face even after the resurrection. And St. Peter could make a mistake, and he's the rock upon which our church is built. And maybe we can make mistakes Bishop Fulton Sheen used to say in the 1950s, he says, there are many heresies in the world today, but there's one heresy I cannot understand, and that's the denial of the Immaculate Conception. The Immaculate Conception is a doctrine by which we believe the truth that the Blessed Virgin Mary was conceived immaculate without any stain of sin. Bishop Sheen says, I can't understand why modern man doesn't believe in the Immaculate Conception, because they believe everyone else was immaculately conceived. Why can't Mary be immaculately conceived also? Everybody believes they are immaculate, yet they know that they were conceived with original sin. And they committed actual sins during their lives. And everyone has something to be sorry for. And the most important thing we do as we prepare for death is prepare for heaven. There were two thieves that lived wicked lives and were justly put to death on Good Friday. One was Gasmos, the other was Dismas. They were both wicked. They both cursed Christ. They both despised him. They both hated him. But one of them, St. Dismas, repented. One of them saw the Blessed Virgin Mary standing at the foot of the cross and saw that she was the queen of queens and that her child on the cross was God and King. And he repented. And then he believed. St. Augustine says, that good thief believed unto justice, but he confessed unto salvation. He believed that Jesus Christ was God and a king, and he was about to conquer the world. As he's about to conquer it again right now in 2024, he's still king. He's still God. He still rules. His kingdom shall, shall endure until the ending of time and until forever. Devil shall be defeated today as he was defeated before and will be defeated until the ending of the world. And the thief believed that. And he entered into the faith. But then he confessed before men. And he said, This man has done no wrong. But we suffer the just reward of our crimes. Who can go to heaven without recognizing that we suffer the just reward of our crimes? We all deserve death. It's given for us to die because of sin. And after death, the judgment. But if we turn to our Lord Jesus Christ and we call him the priest of the Lord and we turn away from our sins by a good confession, by a good anointing, by the Holy Viaticum, then God will come to us and he will forget all of our terrible sins. He will forget all the things. If your sins be as scarlet, I will make them as white as snow. They shall all be forgotten. So let us live our lives to prepare for heaven and that our home is not here upon this earth. Dismas lived a wicked life, but
But all those last few hours he hung up on the cross, he turned to God and he confessed unto salvation. And the Lord Jesus Christ turned to him and said, This day thou shalt be with me in paradise. And we want to be with the Lord in paradise. And so follow the example of St. Dismas and recognize that we suffer the just reward of our crimes every time we have a headache, every time we're attacked by someone else, justly or unjustly, every time we experience any pain or agony, we suffer the just reward of our crimes. But this man, who is our God and our King, has done no wrong. Believe in Him and follow His teaching and His church and His faith and His ways, and we shall have a happy death and a happy eternity. I will close the day bless you all. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. And after the Mass, we have the blessing of the body to the temple of the Holy Ghost. And then we'll pass on to the cemetery for the third bit. Already had one blessing of the body, and the second blessing will be after the Mass. Then the third one will be at the cemetery. Oh.
Amen. Mm-hmm. 
looks at eternal reality as a sum, comes down to solution eternity. Quia Fiosas. Requiem eterna donne a sum, and looks perpetual reality, comes down to solution eternity. Quia Fiosas. Dominus Fobis Cum, et Cum Spiritu Tuo, Onemus. Praise the Queen of us, Omnipotence, Deus, the Donum, and Fabulae Tuae Ander, but Quae Ordine de Aux Saclum, Seculo Begravi, Is Sacrificius Pregata, Pregati, Sergis Vigita, Sosetium Pariter, Requiem of Capia, Sacitarnum, the Domina Nostrum, and Christian Cneum Tuum, Quicken of Hurrying Out, Holy Catholic, Sancti Deus, the Domina Secula Seculorum, Amen. Dominus Fobis Cum, et Cum Spiritu Tuo, Requiers God in Pace. Amen. Grazie. <laughs> Many other revanere, in judicio mansionis quid, dum vegavit in signatus es seculo per sante trinitas, quibus reans in secula seculorum. Thank you. 